hope it's working. <laughs> is it actually live? It probably is, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> live stream is so weird these days on YouTube. Okay, I think it's live. Do let me know if people can see me. <sighs> Hi. <laughs> hello, hello. See so many familiar names. Yeah, I'm uh, two minutes earlier, but it's okay. Hi. Wow, wow, so many people. Hello, hello. Hello, people. From all over the world, hello. From NYC, from everywhere. How are you, obviously? <laughs> that would be the first question to ask. How is everyone? Whatever you are and whatever time it is in your place, I hope um, everybody's doing well. Let me just check if things are... Okay, seemingly it's working okay. <laughs> well, that would be scary when somebody had their computer on and then suddenly the computer started talking. Still breathing, good. Bored. Social distancing. Well, there are plenty of things to do on yourself, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, maybe it's just me, because I never get bored on my own. Like, I. I'm the type of person, like, I, I can't just have internet. And then I have a couple of friends that I can uh, chat to over internet, and it's fine. Like, I can stay in the cave for the, for the rest of eternity, and it will be fine. But it may work differently for other people. Oh, I have sugar on my finger. It's sticky. I'm just gonna... Not a good idea. Okay. Get off. Anyway, I'm just gonna drop it in my water. Yeah, university dorms definitely probably will be closed. Universities are closed in a lot of places. US, okay, let me see where everyone is. London, wow. The UK, Europe and um, US particularly problematic right now. New York, yeah. I might see. Yeah, <laughs> bless Italy. Italy is having it hard. California, Mexico. Whew. Yeah, it's correct, Lara. If electricity is wor working, water is working, you know, like the infrastructure is working, food is enough, then, you know, it's, it's not too bad. Hungary, Paris, UK, Minnesota. Manila, Manila, yeah, Arizona, Maryland. <sighs> well, it's good to see so many people are here and you are, you are all alive and well. <laughs> it's good to see that. Moscow. I think it's not too bad in Russia right now, right? At least from what I gather. Wow, people from Italy. It's... Yeah, it's like China back in January and February. It's really, really challenging. San Jose, hi. Wisconsin, USA. Everyone in, you, in, 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 the, in the States. Yeah, it's also pretty hard. So, I was thinking today, I'm just gonna chat about the obvious thing. <laughs> So that's the first big thing. And then I probably will talk a little bit more about the fandom situation, right? Uh, <laughs> that was like the biggest news in entertainment business at the beginning of this month. Kind of right now it's kind of quieted down, but um, if anyone cares about my opinion, I just don't want to do another video that I need to edit again. So I'm just gonna talk about that a little bit and then dramas for sure, a little bit of drama. So hopefully, hopefully within an hour we can we can cap this live stream, but um, as live streams go, sometimes it can go crazy. But I'm definitely not gonna do a full hours live stream. Uh, 
on camera. That will kill me. So Ukraine, France, France is having it very difficult too. So first is the uh, pandemic now officially being called by WHO. Um, it's kind of like um, China had the full sort of wrong of it uh, starting in January till end of Feb. And now the rest of the world is starting that. <laughs> if you're looking at it from a drama's perspective, right? Um, the script is now in other places and they just started playing it. Um, it's very difficult for a lot of people. Um, and so I'm not an expert in this and also I'm not a, <laughs> a medical student. My mother is, um, but she's not specialized in infectious disease either. Um, but, but um, just from everything that I can gather, and also the past kind of a month or two of uh, extremely intense communication with people back in China uh, about this. Here are a few things uh, I want to say about this. First is wherever you are, you know, because different places have it in, in different ways. Some places is not too serious. In some places right now in the world, it's pretty bad. I guess most sensible people right now should realize this is no joke. If there are still people around you who think this is just like flu, like the flu, like a, a cold, you know, uh, do your best to let them know it's not. So first thing is pretty serious. So I think it's very necessary to take it seriously. It doesn't mean you need to uh, be uh, need to panic, need to feel like it's apocalypse. It also is not. <laughs> but please take it seriously. Do whatever you can to protect yourself and your friends and the family. And um, the biggest, I guess, the difference that I've realized between how China has dealt with it, uh, my friends back home, family, the stuff that I've heard and I've seen, is China does tell people um, to Chinese government does tell people and advice is always wear masks when you go out. Um, whereas everywhere else in the world right now, seemingly is not really very, um, let's say strict about that point. Mostly it's focused on wash your hands, don't touch your face, you know, stay away from crowded place, try not to get in contact with other people. Um, obviously those are all important. Um, but the thing is, if you do have masks, not just general cotton mask that you wear to stay warm in cold weather, if you actually have those like surgical ones or even like N95 and you need to go to a public place, you know you're going to come across people. Uh, in certain places in the world, I know, like it's almost like a stigma to wear a face mask, which is really weird. Um, Fortunately for Chinese people, it doesn't exist. So people are like, can't wait to wear masks. The only problem is that they can't get it because it's actually a shortage in uh, many, many places. So the problem is if you can't get it, right, there's nothing you can do about it. But if you can, right, do think about it. I know like in Italy, like I've seen videos, people taken recently in uh, some Italian cities because it has gotten to the point where it's really, really, really serious. So a lot of people are wearing it. Whereas I'm in Canada, nobody is wearing it here in Winnipeg, which is like when I went to post office earlier this week to, um, to post uh, stuff and then super, uh, not superstore, Safeway, nobody, like I was the only person there. I felt so weird. It's like, <laughs> like, I hope nobody is looking at me weirdly and thinking that I am sick, therefore I'm wearing it. I'm totally wearing it for my own sake <laughs> to protect myself from possible, um, like, virus. So, maybe it's not, like, I don't know. Like, in Canada right now, nobody's wearing it, which is, like, um, I wouldn't say it's ideal. It may not 100% protect you, but it's better than having nothing. You know, like, when you're in this kind of situation, 
if you have it, why not wear it? <laughs> like, what are you waiting for? That's that's the point. Yeah, because in China, it's just like everybody just go like go with it, with it. We're like, yeah, if it can increase even like um a couple percent of possibilities of protecting oneself, they would just go for it. Obviously, uh, there was a huge shortage and people hoarded masks and then sold them at extremely high pr prices online and then the country, like the government, com came down on it and say, if anybody does that, we're gonna fine you <laughs> till you're bankrupt. But also because the production, um, the fact is if you need to change it every day or every couple of hours, there isn't enough in the world for everyone. So most places have a shortage of this mask thing. Um, and also like just a general, like I said, cotton one is not gonna protect you from anything. It doesn't do anything. You need the at least the surgical one. Although it's not airtight, it has a layer inside, it has three layers. One of the layer uh, is, um, it has a static um, on it. So when small particles come, it will keep them there. It will stick them there. And also it's waterproof. Um, if it's, although they're really thin, the surgical ones, the surgeons wear, uh, they can help you uh, quite a lot. Uh, and then if you need to go to hospitals, you know there are a lot of sick people, then you probably need airtight N95, which is really hard to buy now. I know, everywhere in the world. And actually most face masks are made in China, like 50% of that in the world is made in China. So China <laughs> has to supply its own need and also supply the world, which is why China has to go back to work. Like in starting in March, a lot of cities are starting to, um, like people are go, going back to work, even though the, the uh, current situation is not 100% ideal. It's like we, they can't wait anymore. If they keep waiting, um, essential stuff is not gonna be produced. And so it's a very difficult situation for everyone. But if you are the lucky people who do have those and you need to go to like supermarkets and stuff, please wear one. I, I've also had friends who is back in China who have, um, who have actually bought masks and then mailed it to some US friends because they couldn't get any. Yeah, Amazon probably would uh, cancel others because they just can't fulfill it. Um, I got a, a, a box of N95, but I'm not, not wearing it because it's just a little bit over the top. If, if you're not going into a hospital, right, it's kind of over the top. It looks pretty <laughs> ridiculous on your face. Uh, I, I managed to, to get some surgical masks because right around the time that Wuhan got locked down, which was on my birthday, <laughs> can you imagine? It was like 2020 and I was like, seriously, on my birthday? Are you trying to make me remember this birthday for the rest of my life? So on my birthday, Wuhan got locked down and I was like, mm, this is bad. Virus can get to any place in the world these days within 24 hours because there are international flights. And I'm like, better prepare. <laughs> So I got some surgical masks. And I think like my orders are probably the last wave of, of orders that wouldn't to like Amazon and also a, a, a site on, on, in Canada that sells medical supplies. Uh, because right after I ordered it, um, in the same, on the same day in the afternoon, a friend of mine here also ordered some and then his order got canceled. So. I do have some masks here, but I'm just trying to stay at home as much as I can. I only go out for grocery and chucking out the gar garbages, obviously. Yeah, toilet paper is just such a ridiculous thing. Can we just talk about that? Like, why? Yes, I am Aquarius. And I'm very Aquarius. I'm a double Aquarius. <laughs> Um, yes, 
you know, the good thing about uh, what China has done is this, this was help, hugely helped by the fact that e-commerce and the mobile payment in China now is a normal thing. You literally see beggars on the street who do not carry cash anymore. Beggars beg with QR code. That's how it works now in China. So the good thing with that is right now in this situation, everyone who goes out in public places, if you're entering a public building, like a library, like a museum, like a cinema, whatever, or on a bus, when you go out, you scan your code on your phone. So this is to track people. Yeah, yeah, people, the government gets your information. But if later you're found out that you are sick, they can trace back every public places you've been in the past how many days. And they can find all the people that you got in contact with. And it's been done like that in China. Also on your phone in China right now, you can just click open, locate yourself, and it will immediately tell you around you the closest identified case of a coronavirus person, infected person, where this person is, how far they are from you, like a kilometer, two kilometers, where exactly they are. So that's just like really, really useful <laughs> in this situation. So now my parents, when they go out and, you know, like go to any public place, if they go out, they have to scan their code so that um, everyone is tracked just in case, right? A few days later, some people get sick, we can find everyone. That's how it's, it's being done in China, which is pretty impressive. So big data company are really happy now that their stock should go up like crazy. <laughs> Yeah, it's major big brother stuff, I agree, but there are times when it's necessary and there are times you would ask for it. <laughs> this is one of those situations. This is why it's also like, there's no black and white absolute of anything in this world. The things that kills you can save you too. You know, the things that you don't like may be absolutely necessary for you at different times. This is called life. Um, the app thing is like different. Uh, so WeChat has that. Also uh, Alipay. Alipay, both of them has that function now so that you can see exactly where are the identified cases related to you in location. Yeah, in Italy, like it's really bad right now because I've just saw the number that came in, I think today, which is 41,000 identified cases and then 3,400 death. That is within the known like number. So if you do the math, it's over 8% fatality, which is so high, which is so much higher than the very ballpark estimation from WHO, which is 3.4. That just means um, the, uh, the medical, like this entire system is overwhelmed in the country. So like if you're in Italy, please don't go out and run. Like why would you do that? <sighs> also like people are like, we're young and healthy, therefore we're fine, no. It's... <laughs> okay, and there are so many factors that plays into what people can get um, infected and what, what not. It's just, just because you're generally healthy and young and strong doesn't mean you're not gonna get a very severe like case because everyone's immune system is different. It just may happen to be like you're very healthy but your immune system is just really dumb at identifying this virus and fighting it. Or maybe it's really good at finding it. So it causes that, um, what is that? word that what storm so basically your immune system overreact and it kills you doesn't mean if you're young and healthy that then you're fine and this is not a common code it's not a flu it, it what they call mild symptoms basically means it doesn't go to the stage when it get it, uh, it affects your lung to the point that you need ventilator to breathe that's what they call mild cases you still have fever you still cough you still feel like really, really crappy. Not perfect storm, psych, uh, what is that word? 
It's the protein that your immune cells create to fight um, invaders. But because um, I know like Chinese name, I can't remember the English name. Go to watch uh, Curse Gazette's latest video. They just did it. Like they released it like today or something. They explained it very well in that video. Yeah, cytokinetics, something like that. Basically, it's overreaction of your immune system. So some young people get it because their, their system is so vigorous, right? So you really don't know how bad it's gonna affect you. And also it's really irresponsible. If you know you're in the like epicenter of this thing, right? Italy, for example, Spain has it really hard too. I think France has it. And good luck to everyone in Britain. <laughs> You probably have far more cases than identified right now. If you're in those places, um, even if you are okay, even if you are the lucky person who has it and just doesn't even have symptoms, which some people do have it, like they carry the virus, they're totally fine, but you can pass it on to everyone around you, like your friends, your family, especially if you have grandpa, grandma in your home. That, that is like problematic too. It's not just like acting responsibly for yourself, but for potentially everyone that you're gonna get in contact with. Also like people who have like underlying lung conditions like diabetes already have lung problems are also very, very uh, at risk of this thing. And also like in China, because like men, older men gets like a higher fatality rate because most of them smoke when they were younger. Even if they smoked, like stopped smoking um, when they got older, um, their lungs are already weakened. So like the male fatality rate is higher than uh, female and then increase by age is pretty dramatic. Like if you're in your 60s, it's a quite different number as opposed to in your 70s or 80s. So all those things. <sighs> I'm just trying to read the comments right now. Yeah, I've seen the graves, I've seen the trucks, I've I've seen the uh the, the churches that have so many coffins. Um Yeah, because it doesn't mean if you're young that you're spared from it. There there's this I just sorted saw today. I think it came like from South Korea. There's a young um, high schooler who's only 17 right and the case is so weird is he's been tested eight times to see if he has a virus the first seven times came out negative the eighth time came out uh, partially positive and they did a test during from 13th uh, this month march 13 to 17 so during four days they did eight tests only the last one showed that he has the it and then he died on the 18th like a very rare case but it just happened in south korea it just shows you there's no guarantee that um, anyone is safe from this <sighs> yes most people probably will be okay like most of the people but then do you want to bet on that you know <laughs> like do you want to bet like on that So we've talked about early 20 minutes, time flies. So what I mean is everyone should just take this seriously, but also don't panic, right? This is not like the meteor is gonna hit earth in two days <laughs> situation. Most people are gonna come out of this fine and there's no need to panic because when you panic, um, when you let that take over you, what happens is your IQ just drops. It's like when you fall in love, you become a dumb person. And when you lose that, anyone, 
like it becomes much easier for other people to manipulate you whoever that person might be or that group might be or whatever you know like place you're living in and whoever those people are who want to make you believe in certain things that will serve their agenda when you panic you tend to uh, fall <laughs> for that and it's very important at this time to to keep your individual critical mind because there's a lot of disinformation. It's like a disinformation war going on between countries and countries and parties and parties, whatever. So don't panic, right? Whatever you do, don't panic. <laughs> you don't want to lose the only, the best defense you have is your intelligence and your rational mind. There's so, there's so much news and so much like, also don't believe in Twitter or <laughs> Weibo of that matter. Don't believe in everything other people say. You know, if you want to find out, like go for more credible sources. Just don't buy into fear and definitely don't, don't like buy into like discrimination or hatred because it doesn't help, right? Like there are plenty of people out there trying to spin this in whatever way, calling it Chinese virus, Wuhan virus, whatever virus. It, it was such a funny thing to see that happening between countries, between the leader of a nation, right? Just, it, it really reads like a like two-year-old kid who just, like the terrible two, twos in the world who had just learned the concept of self and others. So everything is theirs, you know? And, and everything that is wrong is because other people did it. That, that concept is so childish, un undeveloped, it's so lizard brain. It's, it's ridiculous. And, and the other day, I think when Trump said like Chinese virus, right? And Chinese people were like, wow, it's Trump meltdown <laughs> because of the stock market. You see like how, Everyone can spin words. Like you can say that, I can say that back. It's like playing ping pong and, and, and just on the table, back and forth and what we call mouth battle. That's what jump, right? Mouth battle. That's not gonna lead anywhere. It's not gonna solve the problem. <laughs> and also the virus is not, not, not gonna miraculously dis disappear just because you finally successfully blamed it on anyone. You know, it's such a waste of energy and time for people to do that instead of taking care of their own life and doing stuff that actually helps. And also probably a lot of people are too bored at home, right? They have nowhere to go, nothing to do. So they just have Twitter and they're on social media all the time. <sighs> Yeah, because I think probably a lot of people of Asi Asian descendant are watching my channel. Like a huge part of my uh, audience would be people of that demographic. Yeah, this is just not good for you, especially if you're in the US, you know, you have an Asian face. <laughs> like, uh, let's just say people who are not Asian are very bad at distinguishing who is Chinese or Japanese or Korean, whatever. They like, we look the same to them <laughs> in, in general, okay. This is just not good for people and who are, especially in state, states that are, yeah. It's just, yes, there are many viruses that have been called names by the location that they, uh, they, they came from historically, even till today, it's still called Spanish flu, although um, it didn't come, came from, didn't come from Spain, it came from the US, but um, whoever has the bigger stick, yeah, has the final say, let's just say. That's how the word world works. So even if the world works that way, as an individual, you can choose not to. You always have the freedom to do that. And I hope more people are like that. <clears throat> yeah, if you go in and read, like, um, the papers about Spanish flu, how it first started, but it, because it had a huge outbreak in, in Spain, you know, so that's why it's called Spanish flu. I mean, H1N1 back in 2009 started in the US. 
Nobody called it American virus. <laughs> so, you know, if you're a logical person, a rational person, right? You, you'd see how, how ironic and how funny this whole thing is, but a lot of people are not. A lot of people, people have pre like pre-existed concept, concept of what other people are like. And most of that is not based on any factual information or personal experiences. It's just being told by and once they've decided what other people are, um, they're happy to sit in that and never, you know, bother to change. And it's very easy to create that sort of mental enemy of yours and to decide everything bad in the world is created by those people. And um, it's very easy to think of them as two-dimensional things, you know, like only me and people like me are the good people it's it's very common but it's also very low level consciousness can we just say that so the best you can do is not become one of those people you really cannot make other people not act like that Yeah, uh, people are scrolling really fast. I think any people who has like a rational mind, like uh, not fully, just enough, and also have received enough education, understand that um, this has nothing to do with race or nationality or anything. Virus just can, because. On this planet, if a pandemic happens um, and a virus happens, it has to come from somewhere. It cannot just miraculously appear, right? So it always will have an originate or the first identified place. It doesn't mean it's that place's fault. Because it could have actually started somewhere else. It's just like you don't know. And then it got to a place and then that place started to have the first outbreak. That's just it. And also there's so much like conspiracy theory going on like about that lab, that like bio weapon and here and there. I would still recommend people to actually just go for reliable sources people who are sci real scientists who study these things who put out credible papers on credible publications um and, and read those things don't don't just listen to news <laughs> it's so funny it's like that the fox guy right i can't remember his name it's like we need apology from the chinese and i'm like <laughs> seriously it's, it's like looking at Xionghai's bear children in Chinese term. You know those very annoying kids that goes to your place and decides that something you have is their toy and then they want to take it, take it away and then if they can't get it, um, yeah, they go crazy. It's like, ah. Uh, like, how can... A fully grown adult man. <laughs> like thinking that way is like very bad for me. Yeah, vaccine has been developed in both US and China very fast. But the thing is, once it's there, right, you need to test and you do not run a couple of tests and there's time. Once they get injected, they have to be observed, see if they're like also a number, like there's, there needs to be a number of tests uh, to get a, like there's a scientific way of trying to figure out if a vaccine works. So it will take time. It will not just happen tomorrow. It just naturally doesn't happen in that way.
Yeah, that, 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 this weird idea about if you wear a mask, therefore you're sick is... It's very annoying and it's really stupid. I am still wearing a mask when I go out, I don't care. But luckily Winnipeg is very uh, not densely populated, so it, it, it's not too bad a problem. Yeah, so don't blame anyone also, you know, like wherever you are, whatever country you're in, it, it kind of is stupid to blame any particular group of people or country for this. Like say, in the worst case, right, this is actually a conspiracy and it's actually created by a lab somewhere for this virus to whatever. That must be some kind of science that we are not aware that we have because virus is not controllable. Once it's out there, it can mutate on itself. It can go to crazy places that you are not anticipating it. You know, nature has a way of making stuff uh, that just like totally goes out of control. So when you think about that, if the clever people are clever enough to create viruses on purpose to, to uh, you know, do whatever they want, they would also be clever enough to realize they can't control it. You know, you can't control it, so it may later evolving to something that will kill you too <laughs> when you make it and then you unless you know there are people who just want to get rid of the entire human population i'm not saying it's not impossible but, but let's just think about it rationally so also <clears throat> don't try to spread hate and blame on anyone and any particular group of people just do your duty as an individual best protect yourself possible and your friends and your family that's the best you can do if everyone is doing that this is gonna go away fast quick enough okay so i hope everyone is staying safe like there's so much we can talk about this situation but there's only that much time and also <sighs> The more I talk about it, the more probably, I don't know how YouTube does this, but apparently like people who talk about viruses on, on YouTube gets like demonetized or whatever. Like YouTube has its own ideas about what is right or wrong. So we can stop talking about that. I just, everyone, please do your best and stay safe. Stay positive, stay positive. If enough people believe a good outcome at the end of the, this thing, um, it will. It will be a good outcome. It's a, like a warning, like to humans, right? About the problems we have in our world and how things are functioning and how everything is done and how it's organized, how governments, how political systems, how the economic structure, everything, everything, how it's working in this world and how vulnerable it is, how many problems we have. If people are clever enough and wise enough at the end of this, it should, it should stimulate enough discussion about what we can do to improve the stuff that we clearly um, are not good at doing <laughs> um, that's being reviewed by this thing and then do everyone do the best to make it better. So on the most positive side of this is hopefully we can learn a useful lesson from it. Yeah, there. Yeah, one last thing. I'm looking at the the comment about animals and nature having their best moment. It really does show like how irrelevant in a way humans are when you have this. Because in China, when they had this lockdown, very soon people managed to like actually film wild boar running on highway. Uh, there's a deer that got into a cathedral in France, right? Like that's online a video. Also, like the 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 river in Venice, I think, became so clear. It's like because nobody is stirring it. There's also actually in China in Sichuan, 
A panda went on the street. <laughs> it's real. A wild panda showed up. It just shows you if we're not there for just a couple of weeks, nature is already ready to invade. So if we're gone, right, in a hundred years, like everywhere will be covered by like plants and it will be as if we've never existed. Pollution definitely drops because no factory and no cars right, for a lot of places are running, so. It's just like so, it just give you pers give you perspectives. Yeah, panda, it's real. I, I was so, like, it's so funny, like a panda just showed up. So let's let's then talk about um, the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, yeah the ugliness of entertainment business, right? So since the beginning of this month, when that thing was like at its height. Till now, we're, we're into the last bit, last 10 days of the uh, very soon into March. This thing in China has cooled down quite a lot. I mean, because right now, the, the news is global pandemic. Even in China, most of what you see on social media is about what is going on with every other country uh, that is doing, you know, like, that is in the middle of it. So entertainment business news is also like not that important. And then nothing really happened, <laughs> like important or big since then from the actor and his studio. It's like they're, they're radio silent basically right now and probably will stay like that for quite a long time to come. Yeah, the situation is kind of like, it's, it's past its peak, so. Most people are not really talking about it anymore because people got tired and there's only that much you can say about it. So once you've said everything and nothing new came out, like no de new development is, is going on. So people move on to other stuff, right? It's very natural for that. So in terms of how much his career is affected, I'm not an inside person. I don't have exact information and data about whether he's lost a lot of endorsement whether there's different plans for him now from his agency, from every, whether himself, like he himself is like deciding to do, I have no idea. So I cannot say maybe he will be quiet for half a year, couple of months, come back again. Maybe not. He's one of the um, actors of the uh, agencies that he's signed to, but they have more other people. So. It would be a sad thing for the capital behind him to lose him because he really is the hottest uh, idol right now. So that's a huge potential chunk of money that they're not gonna get because he's not active anymore right now. But also he's not the only one. And also uh, it's very, being very businesslike and being very cruel to say that it's very easy to create idols. Idols are mass produced. And they just need a huge like training camp, pick a lot of people in, train them, do whatever, and see which one. Um, it's like it's like that. In, it's in a way, it's like a lab, right? You just try to plant, like see which petri dish give you most amount of bacteria that's grown, and then you take it. If your sample case, your sample base is big enough, you're gonna get some some start out of it. If it's not this one, it will be in the next one. So, in terms of like money behind this entire game. It doesn't matter if it's Xiao Zhan, if it's Wang Zhan, Li Zhan, whoever, right? Like, it's sad that they lose some someone who has so much potential and who is hot, hot, like hottest right now. But the game continues. There will be a next one, a next one, a next one. There are enough, right? There will be enough idols to be created and enough Jiu Cai to be cut, by which I mean, um, you know, the fans. <clears throat> okay, when you say he's talented and he has international fame, it's not big enough for fame. Not even close to the point that uh, it will make any difference in the giant world of entertainment business, let's be honest. In terms of being talented, there are far more talented actors and dancers and singers in China. 
alone. I'm just being very, I know, a lot of people may not like me saying that. He's not the best and he's replaceable. And that's how the industry is going to look at this situation is because there are very few people who are irreplaceable. And usually it takes decades and decades for an artist to build up to that level where they become um, icon. He's far from there. He's far, far from there. And personally, he will be fine. Like, like he, he's not like poor. He's not like, if I don't do this, I have no life anymore. He's, he's only in his like late 20s. You know, if he's healthy, he can have a, still a very successful career. If not in this, in other things. But in terms of like creating IOs and that type of culture, right? Um, he's not irreplaceable. No one is. Like who is like in Chinese current entertainment business that are idol, right? I'm not talking about like 40 years old, 50 years old, or people who are like long time established people. Who is not like replaceable? Everyone is replaceable. <sighs> He, he can't end contract with his company. You know, like in Chinese entertainment business, if you're idle, right, you usually sign contracts with companies that are insane. Like 10, 15, 20, 30 years. It's normal. <laughs> if it, you're thinking two years, no, 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 no. Like 10 is minimum, 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 minimum. Very often 15, 20, 30 years. I mean, by the time maybe the company is already gone. They probably wouldn't survive that long, but um, all those contracts are signed at incredible length. Obviously, if you're rich enough, you think I can break the contract, you know, or you can do that. <laughs> yeah, the contracts are like selling yourself. It's like slavery, basically. <clears throat> I don't know how many years he's got left. You know, this situation, so <clears throat> currently it's very quiet. And, um, and so I just want to talk about fandom, not really specific to him, but obviously linked to it. Um, so if there are people watching in this live stream who are not very familiar with the entire idol industry and how fandom and studio and the artists and agencies, how it's working in China in general, right? Generalizing, not specific about his, but most common ways of operation. I'm just going to explain that to you. So you can make up your judgment about whether in this entire thing, right, the artist himself is totally just unlucky and it's not his business at all. He's just unfortunate or, or he actually has something to do with it. So you can make up your mind. In China, <coughs> idols of industry is a young one. It, it's not like South Korea. It kind of like got carried over from South Korea to China, but China has its own version of it. Um, when you are idle, you usually come from background that are um, not in the traditional stream of going to entertainment businesses. Often in China, the most common way is go to acting academy and then graduate and then start to act. Here we're just talking about acting. We're not talking about singers because singer is a different world. and. Uh, most people would choose acting over singing because b b over music because it gets more exposure um you know you get to fame you get money more and easier so that's like in the acting world the professional acting world usually people go through years of, and years of training and then they start to get small roles maybe in, the, in theater uh TV dramas and film and gradually build that up, that, that relationship with people, with producers, directors in the industry. That's the traditional route. So we were not going to call those people idol or traffic. Traffic means um, liu liang, the amount that's been flowing in Chinese. So that's what we call, we use that word to represent the manufactured idols. So for those idols, they usually don't have that background. They can be doing any other job previously like Xiao Zhan, or they could just be teenagers who are still in school and are discovered by these companies because they look really pretty. You know, boys or girls who can sing and dance and who has potential, who is interested in this business, who has connections to the company, whoever, however they get these people, right? So they train these people and then they uh, they debut. By, by a certain time, the company thinks you're, you're ready to be a singer, be an actor, actress. 
And also often they go through those talent shows, so many today in China, about singing or dancing, um, <clears throat> or, or like band, like girls band or boys band, whatever. There are so many ongoing ones. So often they go through that kind of a talent show. And that's the, like the first way of let the public see them and then start to build fan base and then support. And then if they su they're successful, then, you know, like, so everything is like a business. For those companies, they would collect hundreds, hundreds of applications and teenagers, young people, and train them and then pick out who is the most potential one and then put them into those shows and then see how many people like them in the, in the public. And if this one is really has great potential, right? We put more resource onto this person or this group and then, and then they eventually become like, you know, like they're debuting basically. Now they have records or they are uh, in dramas, they got roles. And they, if they do well, they get a lot of money from the company. So those are, those are the idle ones. And um, Xiao Zhan's case is very unique because usually idols are very young. Like when, when they started training, they're in their teens, <clears throat> like Wang Yibo is. So by the time they debut, usually it's late teens, early 20s. And it's also considered to be the golden time for idol actors, singers that at that age. And if you want to be famous, you need to be famous then. You cannot wait. If you get older, when every year that you have, like that you're not out there and being famous, you are becoming less, less valuable. It's just commodity. It's, it's like people are treated as things in this kind of industry. So for him, he, he is very, uh, he wasn't trained at, at all. He went through normal universities. He went to work. Then he got into a talent show. So by the time he's debuting and then gotten, in, gotten into the industry of acting and stuff, he's already much, much older than most of the idols. So that's one thing that he has that's very different. Makes a lot of people like like him more because of that, because they're oh, like, it's such a, such a st good story, right? For any ordinary person who wants to have a dream like that, who can make it happen. So, um, he works at a graphic design place. He, he learned graphic design. So basically he can do Photoshop better than most of his fans can do. That's, he is Adobe savvy, let's just say. <laughs> That's his job. But this, so a lot of people like him a bit more because of that reason, but also this is a really disadvantage for him as an idol, which is what I'm gonna say later now about the fandom thing. So when you are an idol, you are not the traditional professional actors. Um, you are much more besieged by your fandom. It's unfortunate, but it's a fact. So um, usually for, for an idol who's very successful, the management company, because for him, I think, He's signed to Wajidiwa, which right now is only taking care of his uh, singing part of the career. It's a, not a good company. So he also has his acting kind of contract signed to a different company, company called Xinli. Xinli is owned by Yuewen Group, which is owned by Tencent. And then he had his own studio made, uh, which is made with him and another person who is also a, um, a owner of the Xinli. So it's very tangled thing in that entire structure of his studio and his career. Um, but with this type of idol actors, um, they have the type of fandom that is professional fandom. It's not like people who like their work and kind of come together and then are very foxy, are zen. You know, we like the work, we like the actor, but we're totally organized less, organization less. Whereas his fandom is a, it's like army. They have military level kind of organization abilities. It, it has like the top of the fandom, the most of the head of fans have direct access to their studio, to the artist when they need to coordinate certain 
um, events. For example, there's a concert, and we need how many people to sit, for example, in the uh, arena and holding those light signs, right? Those are all tasks that's handed to them. And this person would, would then distribute who and who and who do what. So it's all real organization, money, everything is like, it's, a, it's an army and it's a team. And it will be totally naive to assume a hottest fandom fa uh, idol person right now in China has a totally organized le like organization less fandom. It doesn't work like that. And one important thing needs to be done, for example, um, the actor now is uh, doing an endorsement for product, whatever it is, and then they're gonna put it online and sell, sell it on this day. They'll start to receive orders. Everyone in the fandom will know. So the, the head of the fandom will let the news go into smaller heads of the fandom, go into individual people, eventually to individual person who are like at the lowest, it's like a religion. It really is like a religion to everyone and saying we have, and then they have QQ groups, which is like, it's China's, um, it's similar to WeChat. It's like internet, like group chatting on chatting program. And then those fen tou, uh, the fan head will have multiple chun groups that can go up to thousands of people in each chun. And they will say on this day, this thing is gonna sell and our group's task is to buy how many, how many, how many in the first 10 minutes. They get this, it works like that. So on the day when the thing goes out, right? First 10 minutes, 10,000, 100,000 units sold. Wow. And once that's done, everybody congratulate each other. We've done something for our, our idol. And then you can like, and then the Jinju Baba, the money giving fathers, which is the brands, right? The brands, the sponsors was like, we can show how great our idol is, how popular he is, how much money he can bring. So it's such a good idea to make him the spokesman of whatever your product. So, and for fandom, they usually do three things, right? What we call, they, they have like, it's like a very uh, organized um, working as a company almost. They each have their own task. So three major things they do. Kong Ping Fan Hei Shua Shu Ju. Kong Ping controlling comments. Fan Hei um, anti black. That's a direct translation. Basically, uh, I'll explain it later. And then Shua Shu Ju. So refreshing data. So what do they do? If you're in the Kong Ping Zhu, in the group of, in charge of Kong Ping, controlling comments, you literally go on Weibo or Douban or all those social media platforms in China and you search. Like you have a couple hours of a day de just dedicated to doing this job. You're gonna type in your idol's name and you see what random people are talking about him. If there's anything related if it, it's like an official account of a, anybody, a newspaper, anything that, that, that wrote something about your idol, you immediately run into that post and you start to post positive comments and you let other people know that this post has been posted. So hundreds of them rush into and post <laughs> positive comments. You make sure that a random people who came across this post, when they scroll, the only thing they, they see is good things about this idol. So they do this. This is the first Kongping. If, so, so what you see is, if there's any news of this idol on Weibo or Douban, um, from whatever account, maybe it's a newspaper account, maybe it's a magazine account, maybe it's a drama reviewer like me, for example. If I talked about something about this, this idol, and, and if it's, it, it got big enough, and, and, and enough people are reading it, you'll see the first couple of hundred of comments are all good things. And they look like cut paste and look very identical because it's done by hundreds of accounts that rush in to do this. So first group does Kongping, make sure no bad comments show up about their idol. Second, Fan Hei. Also these people will specialize in finding out who is saying bad things. It could be just a random person who has an account that account that only has like 20 followers, right? A personal Weibo account. The person just watched this drama and say, what the heck is this acting of this 
actor and they write the name of the actor or the drama's name so it can be searched and found by these people and if you say anything bad about this person you, you can wait and you can see how fast right people catch up onto it and then you know how big the fandom is and how professional they are so immediately there will be so many vicious comments that just come in rushing and and try to so they're called fan hate so anti hates it so the, they would consider everyone who says bad things about their idol are intentionally smearing the idol's name so they're in it to fight the war against these bad bad people if that comment is if if that post about their idol being not perfect is um influential enough they will guaren hand this person out so take screenshot take links of this post put it on the big fan heads account and let warn all the fans of this idol here now is an account account on weibo that says bad things and we have dug through this person's weibo history and he has said this 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 wrong things now what we can do is go report this guy because this guy or this person has written once three years ago something that is for example anti-government whatever you know like fine or, or promiscuous or sexual whatever find an excuse and the hundreds of people rushing to report this person and they also send private messages to this person that are just absolutely vicious I, I've seen those because I've been sent a lot okay during the Zhu Yilong thing I can tell you like your entire family go to die you are a bitch that's just like a normal version there are very inventive and imaginative ways of calling you names that are just like you can't say it on YouTube okay so they make this person's life a hell and they make sure that account gets destroyed so that's fun hey okay so a group of people do that then basically is make the data look good so if there's a vote say Weibo doesn't vote who is the best actor of 2019 now now this is the job right <laughs> every group gets dealt with every day you have to go in every person and vote how many times and um or if there's any kind of chart billboards whatever you know like or the or or a, their name is attached to a new product and then it needs to hit a number of sales to show who is the boss these are the people who do data and the value the com commercial value of this idol heavily 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 depends on the fandom's operation ability how much they can how much money they can pull in right and then how much they can control the public's opinion about this person now you've heard how professional fandom works you see what i mean by it is impossible to take the actor away from this fully because they know they're not stupid right all the idols are not stupid if they allow this to happen if they allow such a professional military like cult like religion like fandom to operate in their name for his or her own benefit they know <laughs> and their team knows um and they often get direct contact with with this um the, the fandom to use the fandom's power to get what they want there have been plenty of cases when just because a fandom is so powerful that the idol is in competition with other idols for something whether it's endorsement whether it's a role of a drama or, or a, the possibility of singing a song for something fandom can actually um, affect the outcome and it becomes a fandom fandom war so if you're getting resources if you're actually getting your commercial value is is basically helped by this huge number of people if you get benefit from it if you manage to get to um the top of the of the idol world if you're so successful because you benefit from this crazy operation <laughs> of fandom then when shit happens when one of them one of those crazy people in the fandom right did something that is stepping over the line and it caused a big problem like the AO3 one for anyone who knows anything about fandom who are not totally 
not familiar with how venom works, it would be naive to assume that the um, the artist, the idol, can be 100% cut clean of this. It's totally not his fault to blame. Because you already are enjoying, like, whether you like it or not, it, you enjoy a lot of things. Because you have a mob-like fandom that does a lot of things in your name. So, when backlashes happen, and it will be stupid to assume that you can get out of it cleanly, and it will be actually not logical to think that it's right. Now, if you're totally unfamiliar with how this whole ridiculous fandom thing works in China, and from, from what we call passersby, right? Pedestrian, so who have no idea about this. The first time you come across this news, you, you definitely go for it. I would say that too. What like the heck is that? It's just those stupid fans did stupid things. It has nothing to do with the idol. But unfortunately, in the idol industry, if you know it, you can say that. Um, his fandom has, fandom has done a couple of crazy things last year already. It's just it hasn't gotten to the point where everyone knows. Like, people who are not familiar with fandom knows about this thing. Um, like, there was a girl, I think, um, who worked at a hotel. And she found out that Xiao Zhan is gonna be their hotel's guest one day. So she uh, did, she made this, she bought it, I don't know, like a, a cushion that looks like his cat. He has a cat called Nut, right? And put it in his room and had a note and saying basically, you know, welcome to the hotel and stuff. Like, <laughs> and that person got bullied so badly. Wow. And, and, and it was pretty scary. He lost, she lost her job over that. And, <laughs> and Xiao Zhen did nothing. There are other cases, right? When people went down trending on Weibo because his fandom decided this person is problematic and we're gonna get rid of it. We're gonna bully this person till, report this person till they disappear. It has happened quite a couple of times. It just like isn't big enough as AO3. And he never, he never says anything about that. Because I think from his point of view, okay, I understand. He's an idol at an age that's not ideal for idol. And usually in China, the idol industry is, you have the first two years as your golden time. Once you have, like, it's gone by, the peak is gone. Like, when you think about Li Yifeng, think about Yang Yang. A couple of years ago, they're on trending every, every day. Now they're kind of almost not there. So everyone knows, when you play this game, you need to grab the first two years when, when you got hot and got big, and you need to cash in on this like crazy. You miss this time, you don't have it anymore. Especially in his case, because he's much older. So he's at a position where he he's scared, I think, and dare not offend his fandom at all. So when things that show up in his fandom that are from any common since people's perspective ridiculous, he's not there to stop or even just voice a little bit of people, calm down, don't do this, right? It's unnecessary. If he just comes out and say a little bit when certain things happen, it would not have gotten to today's point. So that's a, a lot of people's argument is he is, he's in it. The fact that he doesn't do anything when he sees his fandom goes crazy eventually it led to this big thing happening, makes him responsible for it. That's a lot of people's opinion too. So you can decide what you think about it. This is more, more muddier, right? And more complicated. Also, it has a lot of other things like capital, companies, monies playing behind it. Who is, and once this battle starts, right? A lot of people who play into this game will try to get the cut for themselves. So now, when his fandom and AO3 fans and uh, creative freedom sort of like a group of people, right, all comes into this battle, um, there are people who are de definitely basically hired by his enemies, because he has a lot, I mean, idol world, right, competition, to, to intentionally, let's say, add fuel to the fire. So there will definitely be people who have very bad intentions to make this thing go as worse as it could possibly go, as bad as it could possibly go. Um, 
But the thing is, it got out of control. It just went crazy and nobody could see. It could get to this point and no one can actually tell who is who. It's so crazy. Um, and in the end, the money behind this game never loses. They can lose Xiao Zhan, but they can create another one tomorrow. So, as an individual, it, it's like, it's a very sad fate for idols in this way. But also, you cannot say he's not aware of it. He's well into his mid-twenties when he started this career. He's a fully grown man. <laughs> he knows what he's in for. And it will be naive to assume that he's totally innocent and not knowing anything. Like, you know, like, it doesn't make sense, right? He's a guy who actually worked in a real job. He knows. He should know how, how this thing, like, before he even started playing into it, he would know. There are things there, you know. It is very unfortunate the situation just happens on him, but it's a huge lesson for, for the entire entertainment business and the idol world. I think a lot of companies, after they, they've seen it, they would actually try to think about their artists and idols and how they should do something about the fandom so that this doesn't happen anymore. Somebody, you know, like eventually when, when this type of culture goes out, out of control, eventually we'll have to pay the price. It just happens to be him in this situation. Unfortunately for him personally, but kind of inevitable because this thing has been going on for so long and so many people are victims of this entire weird twisted thing. And 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 like a couple of like really famous and popular actor in the past few years also have crazy fandoms. I mean, if you've known me long enough, you know the story. But why it doesn't affect them as badly. For example, Zhui Long. He has pretty intense fandoms too. But the good thing about him is he's a professional actor. He went through the normal stream, going to a school, getting training, have nine years of acting, backing him up before he blew up. So he's already built enough relationships in the industry with directors, producers, people who like him, who appreciate his talent, who would give him his professional jobs because they know what he can do and trusting him. Whereas for Xiao Zhan's case, he only had Untamed, really. And let's just be honest, from a professional actor's perspective, that work can be improved. He's definitely not even at the place where he can say I'm a good actor. He's just been good because in idol's standard, he performed, I think, um, better than what a lot of people expected. But in terms of the the quality of work itself, it's not like the greatest thing ever. And he has nothing else and there's nothing to back him up. He, he also came from a, a background that's totally irrelevant to entertainment business. He has no, as I, as far as I know, like no family connections, you know, it's not like, um, if you know, like how many actors actually have family connections, friends connections, parents generation, grandparents generation that you're totally not aware of in China, <laughs> there are many. Most of the successful, really successful ones that you see today, somewhere, right, they actually have deep connections to other established people in the industry. So they are much better at standing storms, whereas he, him, it's just not. So he's just like really unfortunate in every way that you can consider his thing. And I, I think um, the other day I was looking at a video from Huang Zitao, if you know. He's also an idol, singer, dancer, but also actor. Uh, he's in... Um, what is the drama? Ah! Couple of days with... A uh, couple of years with Yang Mi. Can someone... Tampanguan? Is it? Is it Tampanguan? Can't remember. Negotiator? Anyway, um, <clears throat> I, I saw a video of like multiple, like, um, uh, sort of snippets from different programs interviewing him, talking about him. 
and he there was a time that he is really disliked by China Chinese in, uh, on China, China's internet. But these days, the view has turned around quite a lot. A lot of people really do appreciate him. For one big thing is he always, he's, he's been very consistent from day one. In every way he can, whether he has been a teacher on an entertainment talent show program, whether he's been interviewed, he always says to his fans, don't focus on me, focus on your own life. Don't waste your money or your energy and go fight wars for me. It is unnecessary. It is wrong. The only reason I am being an idol is because I want to inspire people to, to be a better version of themselves. That's the purpose. Not, not idolizing me and treat me like a god. I'm not a god. I'm a very normal person. I'm talking about Huang Zitao. And he's talked about that multiple times over a lot of platforms. Um, <clears throat> I'm not saying he's the best idol out there, but at least he's he's showed his position in this thing, right? It, it's not ideal in terms of doing that because it will make a lot of weird fans go unhappy about that. They want to be, they want their idol to be their own thing, right? Like, like totally belong to them, which is a very twisted psychology anyway. But he's like, no, I'm not the most important thing in your life. You are your, the most important thing in your life. You should do that. And it's a very, in a way, very ballsy for um, Ido to say that. But it's highly appreciated these days. Because of that, like, a lot of people start to, you know, like, after a few years, right, when he's still in the industry, when people look back on what he has said. <clears throat> Xiao Zhan has not said that near in nearly enough. Not nearly enough. And and also, let's just say, because he's he got to this level of um, popularity too quickly, um, he's made many, many enemies on the way. The industry is a very cruel place. Um, and also, he's, he's <laughs> helped by a very incompetent team. There are people on his team that are extremely annoying and just give the worst impression to everyone they work with. Uh, I'm not going to go into details, but I've heard enough <laughs> within the industry, friends, that um, that it made sort of the uh, the collaboration right with different, whether it's TV station, whether it's um, it's a newspaper, whether they, he gets interviewed by somebody or like all those business, like how his team conducts business makes a lot of people very angry. And so when when shit happens, nobody would will. will say things for him, will not stand up for him. And also he's made enough enemy because he's so popular. As you can imagine, he would have taken the meat out of other people's mouth. If it's something that could have gone to this idol or that actor, now went to him because he's more popular, that team is not happy. It, it, it's very normal, right? So when this shit happens, if they're good, they're, they, they, will, they will stay silent and just laugh secretly. It's like, yeah, finally, you see what goes around comes around. You stole something from me, karma. And if they're nasty, which plenty of people are, you bet they do something to make the fire burn even bigger. So that's also the danger of getting famous too quickly without having a very strong base. So it's like a multiple, multiple cause that eventually got this thing this big. Um, that you can't really just take one element out of the whole thing and say, that's the only cause of this. This is the only person who is responsible for this. It's like um, synergetic result that's just being caused by too many things in, in play and eventually got to this point. But it doesn't mean necessarily 100% that this is the ending for his career in the entertainment business. Maybe it's not. We don't know. We really don't know. Maybe there's still information we, we haven't found out yet because, because of how silent his team and also himself has been over this whole thing. Literally, this like information uh, lockdown and silence. Maybe, um, maybe there will be a next chapter of this thing just because something we are not aware of will come to light later. You never know. Huh.
Hi, Red Panda from France. I don't know what his fans doing. I, I don't want to think people as a group, you know, when you say his fans. There, there are fans who are like casual fans. There are fans who are like operational military fans. There are fans who are very rounded, full rounded, normal person. And there are fans who are just morons. So in terms of lumping them together and think, what are the fans doing? I have no idea. <laughs> right? It doesn't make sense to think it that way. Well, his drama, right? He has Douluo Dalu, Douluo Continent. He has um, Yu Sheng, Qin Duo Zhijiao with Yang Zi lined up. It depends on if Tencent. <laughs> Tencent is rich enough to decide whether they want to air a drama or not, because it's not going to significantly impact its end of the year report. It depends on how the situation fares out, I think. They would definitely want to get the money back, but they have to consider if I let the drama out right right now, which is definitely not going to happen. Um, am I going to get a lot of backlashes? A lot of people canceling their subscription with Tencent, right? Like there will be for sure. Um, so shall we wait out? Maybe five months later, six months later, half a year later. Maybe like because anything can happen. Like maybe in three months time, something happens that will, will change the picture you never know so from that perspective it totally depends on if the platform the the copyright holders everybody the, the money the money the capital in play of the game yeah i didn't talk about capital but if you can read chinese you can go on bilibili and there are people who actually dug so deep into the entire business structure of his studio himself his um wajijiwa company his signed Xinli company and Yuewen and Tencent how all the money and all the stock and who is holding how, how much percentage and how that thing plays into this it's a huge huge game that um I can't explain it just talking I have to show you graphs which I don't have but it also depends on how the money behind it is operating so it's so complicated but Billy Billy has enough of that if you want to find out hey <sighs> so I've spent so much time talking about that, but I think a lot of people are interested in this. You, you do see how many sides this thing has, right? It's not so simple. It definitely is not just stupid fans did something stupid. No, <laughs> it's much, much, it runs much deeper. And um, China, China Daily, which is the newspaper of China's government, also Jian Cha Ba, which is the bureau or the, uh, the official organization in China called the Procuratorate. So basically it's like state prosecution, right? The, um, if you are <laughs> official and you take up a bribe and you're found out and the state prosecutes you, and you, 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 you get, you know, like <clears throat> in trouble with Jian Cha Yuan. So Jian Cha Yuan Daily, their official a newspaper, recently, I think last week, wrote two full sides of printed newspapers about this situation by five different people, journalists, from different angles. This is the first time it happens about anything that happens in fandom and for an idol actor. And it, it kind of talks about a lot of different angles, for example, uh, fan fiction, le legality, you know, fandom's operation, all that type of angles. Just the fact that it happens, it means it has reached too many people and broke too many barriers. It has become an issue that's much bigger than what um, anyone could have anticipated. So it just means like the, <laughs> the top, 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 top of China people know about this. So whether that's gonna affect his career, right? Ooh, <laughs> you know, and it's so silly. You know, it's literally so silly that when Jian Cha Rebao sent out that, um, that print, and also uh, on their Weibo account, they had those screenshots of their printed version of that newspaper, which goes into every Chinese official sort of government organization. <laughs> and his fans, right? At least, at least claiming to be his fans, whether they're real fans or fans from other side trying to make his life worse, <laughs> went to report that account on Weibo. And then Jian Chai Rebao sent out other Weibo and laughing at the matter, basically, with a hashtag fa, Which means, luckily, I know a bit about law. Because Jian Chai Rebao's official account, Jian Chai Rebao itself, is like the law carrier of China. And their account gets attacked 
by Xiao Zhan's fans and gets reported for inappropriate whatever posts. <laughs> and the Jinchao Rubao account is so funny, it just sends out this is like Xiong Kui Dong Fa. Alright, it's lucky that I know a little about about lol. Like how ridiculous is that? So it it has become a it's like a what what's the name for that that type of comedy? Just being totally ridiculous, basically. So by this point, like a lot of people are like, ah, you know, we've had enough. This is too stupid. It has gone to the land of like unimaginable stupidity. We should stop. So that that's that would be the end of this. I have I think uh, let you, I I think I let my audience catch up with the uh, <laughs> the latest development of this thing. Slapstick, yeah. Okay, it's just too ridiculous. <laughs> I I think if like I don't know I don't know if if, if like chairman, let's say of China, suddenly opens a Weibo account, right? Which will never happen, by the way, it's not Trump. He's not Trump. But if he has a Weibo account, and he starts to talk about this situation, right? Now I would not be surprised if the fandom go report that account. Because <laughs> um, it has proven that they have no brains. There's no basic ideas about how the world works. It's so ridiculous. Okay, finally, a few things about dramas. It's already an hour and 20 minutes. So there are a lot of dramas. It actually literally came out like today, tomorrow, over this weekend. Dump. Like the last dump of dramas. <laughs> so we have uh, Killing of 3000 Crows that got out today. Skating to Love is also online now. Tomorrow we'll see um, a, a drama with Jin Dong. I can't remember the title. Also, uh, what's the other one? Uh, which is by Yu Zheng, the um, Chinese opera drama with Yin Zheng and Huang Xiaoming. Winter Begonia comes out tomorrow. So I'll definitely talk about that in the weekend video. <coughs> Too many dramas. In your face. How did the Lonely Castle? I don't know. I want it to come out now. I really do. But. Yeah, Pillow Book ended for uh, VIP, I think. It ended for everyone, I think, by this time. Well, yeah, the basic VIP. Jin Dong. Is that like... I can't remember the title. I can't remember. Yeah, everyone, if you need to go to sleep, go to do whatever, go and do it. <laughs> if you're so bored and locked at home, you can you can stay for a bit more. Just talking about dramas in general. So, so many dramas are coming out. And um, I'll see what I see and what I need to make a review about. Thank you. <laughs> I love you too. Four season. Four season. Four seasons. But let's just, one tiny thing about English that I don't like is like the plural and singular thing. I really don't like it. It's just my Chinese brain doesn't like it. You know, often you come across words you're not sure. Should I use like plural or singular here? And it's like, why make life so difficult? If you need to tell people how many numbers of certain things, you can just say four phone, which doesn't change the nature of phone. Why do you have to say four phones? What does it do? It doesn't give you any extra information and you come across countable and uncountable, you come across hair which cannot be counted. <sighs> Why? <laughs> I hate this in English, I really hate And there often comes across like very um, vague words, nouns, that are like conceptual. And you're not sure whether you should say their life or their lives. Like, so many situations like that that make you go mad. It's like, I hate playing a gra grammar game. Why is it necessary? It really doesn't add anything to the meaning of your words. It's so redundant. <clears throat> so if you want to study Chinese, there are a couple of things that you, you, you should know that's so good. It's first, we don't have plural and singular, so we don't change the noun. We don't change verbs either. There's no tense. If you need to say something happened yesterday, you just add. So. 
I do this thing yesterday. That's how it works in, in, in Chinese. You don't have to say I did it yesterday. So it's the same verb. You, you just add time. That's it. If you will do it tomorrow, then you say I do it tomorrow. So there's no tense. There's no, um, you don't change um, no singular or plural. You also don't have uh, the uh, verbs kind of agreement like if you're, he does it, I do, you know, <laughs> it's like, no, no, it's always that same verb. And, I, and obviously not gender, English is not gender too. <clears throat> so you can cut all that out, all that difficulty of a lot of languages out right from the beginning. Isn't that easy? <laughs> yeah, a lot of counters, That that is one thing that is not is like a, for example, 一杯水, right? a cup of water, or 一支笔, uh, so you can't say a pen, you have to say a 支笔, which 支 is the counter of pen. Uh, right? 个 is the counter of um, 一个 steamed bun, it has to be 个, it cannot be 支, do not ask me why, <laughs> it just works. So there are annoying things in Chinese too, but but the thing is, like, tense is so painful. It's so painful. And also you have those, like, might have done. <laughs> right? Had I known something, I might have done. Holy, like, who thought of that? You have to change everything. French grammar is really bad, too. <laughs> it's so complicated. English probably is the easier language in the, in the sort of, um, in a, in a family of all the other languages. The only bad thing about English is pronunciation is not um, regular. Also, too many words. Oxford di Dictionary, each that big, 26 of them <sighs> on the shelf. It's like, don't you have better things to do in your life apart from creating words? And it has like multiple words for one thing because one came from, you know, Anglo-Saxon, one from whatever, you know, French, Latin, and it's like, it's like cow and bulls and beef and I'm like, no, can you just use one word, which is in China, it's niu, niu, okay? And that's it. How is it my fr fridge, do you mean? Uh, he's singing. I've decided it's a he, but I have not decided the name. He's singing right now. Okay, so a little bit about the drama. I've only watched the new ones that came out today and, and will come out tomorrow. Obviously, I can't watch that because it hasn't come out yet. <laughs> but the ones that have, that have come out, I just started skating to love, literally like half an episode, so too early. I watched first two and half, so first three episodes of um, Killing 3000 Crows, and I've had a big problem. If you, if, if you follow me on Discord, you already know. It's, um, it made me very, very uncomfortable. I don't like it, <laughs> let's just say. The first two episodes, I just didn't like the look of it or it looks very rough. Like the props looks cheap and the CG looks meh. And the plot looks meh. <laughs> it's like Kit wrote it. It's extremely childish and, and uh, there's no, there's no sophistication in the plot at all. But but by the time I saw um, the third episode, I got really angry. <laughs> it really offended me because it has this plot that I, I'm like totally unacceptable. So basically the male lead is a god, right? And he has some kind of ties with the female lead over a long period of time that is totally not aware uh, in the female lead department because she is a mortal. She doesn't know this god at all. And later in the drama, it will explain definitely like why they're connected and whatever, whatever. So he's kind of like watching over her all the time. Anyway, the thing is, she doesn't know who he is, right? And and they got to this place where basically she is accepted into this godly mountain as a servant, and she she's working there. And this this god just came behind her, 
a knight and grabbed her and hugged her really tight and then start to talk right by her ear like with a wispy kind of like voice can I kiss you? I'm like <laughs> sexual harassment in fantasy world ancient setting that is so creepy like yeah you know her and you care about her she has no idea who you are and you are basically her employer <laughs> who wrote that stupid script it's so weird when you watch it like Ooh, you just i just went nah. and then she poked him with a needle that has um has stuff on it and so it made made him fall and i was like <laughs> but still still okay so the, the problem with that is it is logically wrong because you are trying to make your male lead the good guy of this story. Eventually, you need to sell that he is a very good guy, okay? And he knows she doesn't know him. He's also a god, Xian Shangjian, who has been many years cultivated to this point, thousands and thousands of years. <laughs> It's like he hasn't even passed the basic human lesson of how to be a decent man. But he's a god? Like, how does that make sense? If you are a god, you have magical powers, you are very old, actually, and you're very wise and powerful. Would you do that to a girl? That is so wrong, right? Like, it doesn't make sense. It just makes you agree. But like, what, what's the difference between this type of god and... And on a crowded subway, you know, those men who grab girls' asses. Like, like, what's the difference? And you're trying to make him people like, like, like the the center of the narrative. Like you want people to fall in love with this character. And how is that con conduct making sense? I'm so baffled by it. I was like, who wrote that? And as if it's not bad enough, right? Immediately after that scene is like he brings like oranges and tangerines to those young girls who are like servants, new servants in um, that got into this sort of godly mountain, whatever. And and all the girls went over because he's good looking and he's a god and whatever. Okay, okay, I can accept that. And although I don't like to look at everybody as if all females are brainless, right? And then he intentionally is like teasing those girls, right? And then one of the girls just wouldn't really bring us and say, you can kiss me. And then he goes to his girl and say, you smell nice. That's real, for real. Like that's in the lines. It's so gross. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> so are you trying to say for those near mortal girls, in front of a good-looking god just because he's powerful, good-looking, a male, and your employer. Um, therefore, he can do anything to you. And everything he does is like a generous, uh, it's, like, it's like grace from, from, I don't know, what heavenly above power and I should just kneel and accept with pleasure. <sighs> I'm like, who wrote that, really? <laughs> this is 21st century. This is not a slavery society. I'm not saying you need to be feminist in your writing, but can you just be a normal, sensible human? <sighs> it's so... I feel so bad for the actor, because he is a pretty serious actor. He's very good. I have the sense that he's not very happy about his role in his drama. <laughs> he's very bei po ying ye. He's forced to, um, like, because the drama came out and he has to post something on Weibo and that type of stuff. But I, I feel like he, he's very not into it. He probably knows, like, it's pretty not good stuff. For any serious actor, right? They probably do not really want this type of drama on their portfolio, but... So these are the two scenes that really made me go, holy, I can't watch this anymore. So I'm not sure if I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue watching it. I just feel it's really annoying. And I haven't continued watching it, but my friend who has seen further beyond that point has 
told me that there are more scenes of him talking next to the girl's ear. <laughs> talking to the female's ear about other creepy sweet stuff. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> now I appreciate Zhang Zhen's Shenzun so much more. I appreciate his Shenzun so much more in Love and Destiny. At least he's a decent man, if not anything else. <sighs> it, it, and also like when you see that move, which is live comments over that scene, the only thing you can see is ha 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 laughing. And also, ah, oh, it's how su, how liao, you know, he's so, he's so, liao is like, you know, <clears throat> um, teasing, teasing. And it's all, all like those things is like the very old saying is like, um, I think, basically like when, when you, when you first, you know, like you do something to, to the futures of the wife of you and eventually you're gonna pay for it, that type of, it's, it's all very wrong. It's like the, the, the audience who watch this only appreciate the fact that oh, it's so sweet, it's so teasing and, and such a good looking man and our female lead and two leads, they just want to see the two leads flirt and do those things, but it's like, don't you guys realize it's creepy? And you don't see that in comment at all. Everyone is like so happy. Okay, what's wrong with people <laughs> these days? Do you not have a brain? We'll see how this one, this one is only 30 episodes long. And on for skating, uh, skating to love, well, I've only seen a little bit. It looks really good. Especially they have a lot of uh, ice scene, um, of uh, ice hockey and also um, the, the speed. Like running in circles, those shots are really well made. It's very difficult to film these things because <laughs> on ice it's very fast sports, and they have so many angles. There are like GoPros. There are like clearly the uh, the the cameraman is following the uh, actor. Also, there are like crane shots. There are shots from and also tele tele photo. You can tell like they have so many shots of um of the ice scenes. I'm like, oh wow. That looks cool. That that kind of like is like money, real money going into uh, filming sports, which is not easy on ice. Like I can't even stand on ice. So, and also the actors are doing really well. They're skating for real. I'm so far very happy about that. So we'll see how how well it goes. Okay, so probably gonna stop it in five minutes because it's too long. It's already an hour and forty minutes. I've said so much. Hopefully it's entertaining enough and informative enough. I don't know. And I hopefully haven't made a lot of people unhappy. <laughs> it's always very difficult and very dangerous to talk about fandom. <laughs> Let's just say that. Yep, I, I always put my stream up, like, they will automatically go up once it's finished processing, which takes about a few hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good, that's good to know. Like, having a friend having lunch with you on lockdown. Just looking at comments. <clears throat> you mean live? Do another one? Gala? Um, not sure. <laughs> I'll see. These days, how can you predict future, right? It can literally turn 180 tomorrow. I mean, I, I have plans to move to Toronto. <laughs> and uh, right now it's like, I have no idea when that's gonna happen. I, I will not fly to Toronto now. It will be the worst idea. Like, 
the, the worst decision to make this year. So that's for sure. doing Chinese grammar videos. Chinese teaching videos, um, it's just very time consuming and usually don't get a lot of views and then also it's just really hard to make to be honest because um, a lot of typing, a lot of um, doing subtitles and it's a pain like for uh, for typing tonal carrot um, letters in the software and then make it into a video <sighs> mm, okay just see what else chinese history discussion i'm not an expert that's the thing <laughs> so i would just have to basically research and regurgitate other people's saying not well learned in that enough. Read, do you read some webtoons? Not that much. Not a huge reader of those things. <sighs> okay, let's see if I missed something. You're welcome. Hellgast73 about fandom. Yeah, I, I figure a lot of people are not, not really that aware of it. Unless you're like from Asian countries and you are deep into fandom. At least you've followed certain idols previously. Whether it's K-pop or J-pop or you know, like whatever. Unless you've actually uh, personally experienced things, you have no idea. It really is just very weird. It's really weird. It's like a big social experiment in a way. It shows like how um, human psychology manifests in crowds. It's like crowd psychology. I'm not that well versed like um, in the Western fandom, so I will be. There will be things I don't understand, probably, and not knowing very well. But so, yeah, Chinese fandom. <clears throat> Is, is also very... <laughs> it's not worth your time at the end of the day, what I mean is if you are a normal person who has a normal job and work and whatever your real stuff you need to take care of in your life like don't waste your life on fandom, it's just so not worth it at the end of the day, you are jiu tai for capital you're, you're the, um, the chives, you know, that grows really fast that's usually made, used in dumplings so every time you uh, har harvest, you just use a huge knife and <laughs> cut it. So that is jiu tai. It's what we use in the language to, to mean basically you, um, you're a pawn in the game and your money, right? Like, and, and, and attention, attention these days is money for, you take away your time, your attention, you, they make you invest your emotional energy into it. They get the money, not you. At the end of the day, you know, and you can get some like really bad trauma after that. <laughs> and they move on to the next, next grooves of jiu tai to cut. So just don't make yourself into their jiu tai. Okay, so pretty much should, should stop. Where jiu tai and gong ju in the end? Yes, that's true. <laughs> Gongjuren, tool people, basically tools. That's very true. <sighs> so everyone, stay healthy. Keep be positive, okay, and then try to stay home as much as you can. Let's hope. We can all write this out and everything will turn out fine. Hope for the best.
and take care of yourself. And um, I'll talk about drama specifically in the weekend video. Hopefully by then, uh, tomorrow, I, I would have seen like the new ones, at least a glimpse at it. <clears throat> and I'll see if I actually can form opinions about them by then. Thank you for joining this uh, live stream. And I'm very, very happy that I still haven't lost my voice by this time, which is already an hour and 40, an hour and 50 minutes. I should go and be a teacher. Maybe that would be my calling. I don't know. Okay, take care. Bye.